I'm Martin Tysons, and on behalf of TAS International, I welcome you to the manual introduction training in the section on orientations, characteristics, and functions. In order to orient manual objects and coordinate systems, manual provides four keywords to position your objects. These keywords are the orientation dot matrix, screw axis, successive rotations, and vector. For this video, we will only go into some detail on the successive rotations. The orientation dot successive rot provides the user the opportunity to specify subsequent, subsequent axes uh, along which a rotation is, um, is, is specified. For example, here in the slide, you see that first a rotation of 90 degrees along the z-axis is prescribed as axis 1 and then the rotation. Then the next rotation along the second axis is a rotation of 45 degrees along the new x-axis. In this way, a new coordinate system is defined and therefore medium objects can be oriented with this coordinate system. The theory manual and reference manual give more information on the other, slightly more complicated orientation methods. Manimo provides three characteristics, three types of characteristics, um, by which macroscopic deformation behavior of objects can be modeled. These are the characteristic dot contact, dot load, and dot material. The characteristics thus represent a macroscopic description of the deformation of a material. The characteristics incl include a loading function, an unloading function, both here together called the stiffness, damping can be specified, as well as hysteresis, and rate dependency. We'll go into some detail in the next few slides. First of all, the loading and unloading functions, the stiffness of the material, are prescribed by functions. Functions themselves are prescribed with the keyword function.xy. Function.xy is a table in which xy pairs are given to give a function. Functions can be interpolated in three different manners. A linear interpolation between the successive xy pairs, a cubic spline interpolation, or a fifth order spline interpolation. Furthermore, functions can be changed by specifying a scaling in both x and y direction and a shift in x and y direction. These changes can be specified through two keywords. One is functmod, which is a modification of a function on a global level and permanently modifies your function for the entire analysis. Func usage is a local modification of the function, where the function itself is not modified, but only locally in the element that refers to the function. For example, a function, uh, any linear function, for example, can be used in a characteristic dot contact with a scaling of 1, or in another characteristic dot contact for another region of, a, of, a, of, a, of the model with a scaling of 2. Damping can be specified through several attributes in the characteristics. Damping itself, of course, is a dissipative force in the analysis and may represent a damping moment as a function of rotation velocity, for example, in a characteristic of a revolute joint. It may represent a damping force as a function of penetration velocity for a contact compliance characteristic. Or it may represent a damping stress as a as a function of strain, for example, in any finite element material characteristic. 
damping can be specified with a damping coefficient with the attribute damp underscore coef. It can also be specified as a damping which depends on the velocity, a damp vel func. Furthermore, damping can be specified as being amplified through a specific function and it can be described as a function itself. Energy dissipation in the Mannheim model can be modeled, for example, through hysteresis. Hysteresis is a combination of a loading function, a hysteresis unloading slope, an unloading function, and possibly damping. Mademo provides three different hysteresis models, of which two of them will be deal dealt with in this video. In model one, the user can model honeycomb and crushable foam-like materials, where materials react through a loading phase, an elastic unloading along the hysteresis slope, and an unloading along the unloading curve, but where reloading occurs along the unloading and then back along the hysteresis slope until the loading curve is again reached. This is typical for materials where permanent plastic deformation like in crushable foams uh, occurs um, and where therefore the unloading is uh, the reloading is uh, elastic. The second model provides the user the opportunity to truly dissipate energy out of the simulation. This is done by unloading along the hysteresis slope and the unloading curve and subsequent reloading along the hysteresis slope and back on, uh, onto the loading curve. This type of energy dissipation is typical for materials like rubber and reversible foams. Rate dependency in a matter model can be modeled with two different keywords. One is the amplification keyword, which is used for characteristic.load and characteristic.contact. And the other one is the rate keyword, which is mostly used for characteristic.material. The amplification can be specified as an absolute polynomial or exponential logarithmic or a polynomial. The rate keyword can be specified as Cowper-Simons rate dependency, Johnson-Cook rate dependency, or your own user-specified function-based rate dependency. The rate dependency is, can, for, can be altered uh, a bit by two different attributes. One is the rate scale func, and the other one is the frequency cutoff. The rate scale func is used to scale the loading and unloading functions uh, as a function of a strain rate. For example, the rate scale func may be linear uh, up to a specific level, constant level, to avoid excessive uh, rate scaling, where for increasing rates the loading and unloading functions are scaled with a certain factor. To avoid excessive scaling in high frequency vibrations, the frequency cutoff attribute can be specified and a value between 1000 and 10,000 Hz generally gives well behaved results. Thank you very much for your attention.